It's a normal day at the office, and Vincent asks the intern to bring him coffee in a very rude manner. Moments later the intern stares at Vincent while he works at his desk and suddenly starts beating him up with his laptop. The other employees immediately drag the intern away and Vincent is sent to take care of his wounds. Afterward, the boss says stress must have affected the boy and that she won't hire interns anymore. She also explains filing a complaint usually goes nowhere but still offers Vincent to talk to HR, however Vincent is fine with forgetting about the incident. When he returns to his desk, Vincent can't help feeling that everyone in the office is watching him. In the evening, Vincent goes home and spends some time looking for a potential girlfriend on a dating app. He also takes a picture of his injury and uploads it to social media with a cheap quote to get lots of sympathetic comments. The next day at the office, Vincent is working at his desk when suddenly a co-worker grabs his hand and starts stabbing his arm with a pen. Once again the others must pull them apart and Vincent immediately runs away, causing the attacker to regain clarity. Later after Vincent was given an arm sling by a doctor, both he and the attacker go to HR to discuss the incident, bringing a video a co-worker recorded with their phone. The attacker says he wasn't in his normal state and swears he can't remember anything before he starts crying. The HR manager blames it on stress and too much workload and Vincent doesn't want to fill a complaint, so the meeting ends with the attacker and Vincent shaking hands. Afterward another boss asks Vincent to work remotely since obviously something about him is unnerving people. Before going home, Vincent asks a co-worker to check social media to see if there are any bad rumors about him, but they find nothing. In the evening, Vincent has a date with the woman he met on the app at a restaurant. Their chat goes well and they hit it off, but Vincent can't help glancing at the window because a hobo keeps staring at him. Suddenly the man starts walking toward the restaurant, but when he crosses the street he gets hit by a car. Terrified, Vincent decides to leave. On his way home, he can't stop feeling that everyone on the street is watching him, so he ends up taking a cab. The next day, Vincent goes for a ride on his bicycle and when he stops at a red light, he notices a driver in a car staring at him without blinking. Scared, Vincent ignores the red light and rides away as fast as possible, but soon the car comes chasing after him. He ends up accidentally falling off his bicycle, but at least this allows him to hide off the road and the car goes away without seeing him. When he returns home, Vincent searches the internet for news related to mysterious cases of violence and finds many examples of people suddenly dissociating and attacking whoever is around them. There are also many videos filmed by people with their own phones of such incidents happening in sports events and stores. The following day, Vincent goes to see a psychologist. Unfortunately the man doesn't believe the part about the attackers having blank faces and says Vincent may want any kind of attention, causing the others to react. Vincent goes home and starts organizing the details he knows so far on a board. The attacks start with eye contact, so he needs to know how they stop. He goes to the balcony and says hello to the neighbor, who at first returns the greeting with good manners. However after some staring, his face goes blank and he throws things at Vincent, who immediately hides. After waiting for a few seconds, Vincent looks out again and notices the neighbor is confused over what happened. He adds to the boards that ending eye contact also ends the attack. Later Vincent receives a package with his latest purchase, a taser, some handcuffs, and paper spray. Then he spends a few moments practicing how to react fast with the taser in hand. Feeling safe now, Vincent goes for a walk while keeping his hood up. When he returns home, the neighbor kids see him arrive and suddenly attack him. Vincent tries pushing them away without hurting them, but the kids keep trying and even bite him, so Vincent has no choice but to throw them to the floor. At that moment he's seen by the mother who immediately calls him an abuser, but at least she stops the attack and Vincent can run to hide in the apartment. Soon all the other neighbors are gathering outside the door and they don't believe him when he says the kids attacked first. Scared, Vincent puts some furniture against the door to keep them from breaking in. When the neighbors finally give up and leave, Vincent packs up his most important things and leaves, making sure to keep his hood up. He takes a cab to his childhood home, where he learns that his father Jean-Pierre is living with a new girlfriend. Vincent borrows his dad's car and the keys to the family's country house, but when he asks to spend the night, Jean-Pierre informs him his childhood room is going through renovations. Vincent's options are the couch or the garage, where all his old things are in boxes. Seeing he's clearly being a third wheel, Vincent decides to leave, but first he stops by the garage to get some of his old stuff and a hammer for defense. After a few hours of driving, Vincent stops at a store to buy some food. He eats it at a table in the park, where he's suddenly approached by a hobo named Joachim and his dog. Thinking he's about to be attacked, Vincent tries to leave, but Joachim asks him to stay and promises it's safe. Joachim watched him buy the food and how he avoided looking at anyone, so he can tell Vincent is like him. Vincent agrees to share his food while Joachim shares his story, this has been going on for 7 months for him, and it got so bad that he had to leave his job as a university professor. He doesn't know what caused it, but he knows there are others like them that chat on forums and blogs. Joachim recommends him the one he uses, called the Watchman blog. There they discuss techniques to survive alone, since even going to the hospital is dangerous. In fact Joachim isn't his real name, it's the username he uses on the forum. Before leaving, Joachim tells Vincent to get a dog because it won't attack him and can warn him of any danger. 
Afterward Vincent goes to the gas station and fills up his tank while trying to hide from other drivers. Unfortunately a man parks next to him and sees him to the point he grabs a shovel from his truck, ready to attack. Vincent immediately gets in his car and escapes without paying. After driving the entire night, Vincent finally makes it to the family's country house and locks the front gate with a chain. Then he uses his laptop to find the website Joachim told him about, however to leave a message he has to create an account. To do so, the website asks him to delete all his social media accounts first. Without hesitation, Vincent deletes all his accounts and makes a new one on the mysterious website, using Dave17 as a nickname. Sometime later, Vincent orders food online and when the delivery guy comes, Vincent makes him drop the box by the gate and doesn't pick it up until the guy is gone. At that moment a neighbor sees him and comes to say hello. The woman is pleasant, but her daughter's face is slowly changing and she tries to reach for him, so Vincent rushes back inside. Then Vincent gets on the website again and finds Joachim's profile, so they start talking to each other through DMs. The next time Vincent goes to the bathroom, he discovers the toilet is clogged. He goes out to check the septic tank that he shares with the neighbor, finding it flooded as well. At that moment a repairman called by the neighbor arrives and Vincent tries his best to avoid eye contact, but unfortunately the man reacts anyway and jumps on Vincent. The men start fighting and after lots of struggle, the attacker throws Vincent on the pile of poo to beat him up. Vincent quickly makes the man fall too and they roll on the poo until the guy starts choking Vincent, who manages to find a rock and uses it to hit the man's head until he's dead. Then Vincent quickly washes off the worst of the dong and drives away with the body in the trunk of his car. Once he's far enough, he opens the trunk and discovers the man is still alive. Vincent wonders if he should spare him, but the man attacks again so Vincent furiously finishes him off with a hammer. After throwing away the body, he returns home and takes a thorough shower. He finds some cuts in his body so he stitches those too. The following day, Vincent goes to the dog pound to choose a pet. All the dogs are barking except for a good boy who smiles at him, so Vincent adopts him and calls him Sultan. They go to the beach and play some games together, but soon a family arrives and starts walking toward Vincent. Sultan immediately barks to warn him and they run away together. At home, Vincent takes a picture with Sultan and the taser and sends it to Joachim. One evening, he drives to a fast food restaurant and makes an order on his phone, asking them to bring it out because he's disabled. Margot is the one who brings his order and realizes the raw meat is for Sultan, so she calls Vincent sweet. When she asks what's Vincent's disability, he confesses he lied, but Margot doesn't mind because she likes having an excuse to catch a break from the clients inside. Later at home he looks for Margot's profile on social media and a crush starts to grow. The next day Vincent starts exercising and watching self-defense videos. When he hears his neighbor speaking loudly outside, he looks through the window and finds the mother scolding her daughter for getting violent. Soon the people in the forum start talking about barricading their houses or even escaping to the mountains. For now Vincent chooses to cover up all his windows. He also asks Joachim if he ever met someone, so Joachim confesses he's married and he had to leave his wife. He misses her a lot but always fights the urge to go see her. In the evening, Vincent goes out in his car and finds the road blocked by the cops. He does his best to avoid eye contact while an officer explains the situation and tells him to take a different road. Luckily Vincent manages to drive away without trouble. Afterward he goes to the fast food restaurant and Margot brings out the food for him again. At that moment two bikers arrive at the restaurant, so a scared Margot gets in Vincent's car and asks him to drive away. To thank Vincent for the favor, Margot tells him to stop by a bar so she can buy him a beer. She brings out two pints and while they drink together, the bikers show up and ask Margot for the money she owes them. When they see Vincent, one of the guys goes blank and Sultan starts barking, so Vincent uses the taser to knock him out. Then the other thug tries to punch Vincent, but he hits him first and rushes to get in the car with Margot to escape. Suddenly Sultan starts growling and Margot jumps on Vincent to attack him. Vincent tries his best to push her away while still driving in a rather clumsy way, and after a few hits he manages to knock Margot out just in time to avoid crashing. Moments later Margot wakes up in a room at Vincent's house and finds the door locked. Outside the room, Vincent asks her to close her eyes, then he guides her out and takes her to his car, where he handcuffs her. Eventually they make it to a supermarket and Vincent gets out of the car to approach a man nearby, but the guy is weirded out and goes away in his own vehicle. Then Vincent gets inside the supermarket and Margot is surprised to hear Sultan growling. At that moment Vincent runs out while dozens of people are chasing him and throwing things at him. He manages to get in the car before getting caught, but the crowd surrounds the vehicle and even breaks a window. Vincent makes them move by starting the car and the group gets to escape safely. Margot finally understands what happened to her last night and believes his story. Moments later they arrive at Margot's home, which turns out to be a boat. They share some drinks and food, and after chatting for a while, they end up kissing. Things quickly escalate and they decide to do the naughty, which is kinda awkward and uncomfortable because they keep handcuffing one of Margot's hands to various surfaces in case of another attack. By the time they're done, night has fallen and Margot is craving a smoke. Vincent goes out to get them from his car and receives a call from Joachim, who announces he's cured. He doesn't know how or why, but nobody attacks him anymore. 
Joachim wishes Vincent good luck and hangs up before going to finally see his wife again. Afterward Vincent and Margot share some joints and fall asleep together. In the middle of the night, Vincent wakes up when he hears Sultan growl and finds Margot attacking him, so he hits her to knock her down and runs outside. Minutes later Margot calls him back but she doesn't blame him for defending himself. While Vincent takes care of the wound he gave her, Margot wonders if they can make their relationship work. Suddenly Sultan starts barking and they hear a voice, which Margot recognizes as the owner of a neighboring boat. Soon more and more voices can be heard yelling in the distance, so the group decides to leave. They drive back to town and are shocked to find a fire that has taken over a house and its surroundings. When they take a closer look, they're horrified to find a body that Vincent recognizes as his neighbor. Then they go around the house to enter Vincent's home through the back door while avoiding the fire, only to find Jean-Pierre with his weapon out. His face has multiple wounds and he explains a bunch of violent people killed his girlfriend. Retelling the story makes him have a breakdown and Vincent manages to make him drop the weapon before hugging him to comfort him. Afterward Jean-Pierre and Margot go to sleep while Vincent checks a message from Joachim. He says things didn't go well with his wife and that destroyed his soul, so he writes to say goodbye before self-deleting. He also drops a map with the coordinates to all the shelters organized by their website. Devastated, Vincent tries to call him but Joachim doesn't pick up, meaning he's already dead. In the morning the group leaves in the car and heads toward a shelter, keeping Margot's and Jean-Pierre's hands tied to the doors. During the trip, they hear the news on the radio talking about a wave of violence taking over the country and the minister advising everyone not to leave their homes. Eventually they find the road blocked by a bunch of cars because everyone is trying to escape at the same time, and Vincent can't drive back because cars appear behind him as well. People's anger grows with the situation and soon everyone is fighting on the road. Jean-Pierre wants revenge for his girlfriend, so he unties his hand and joins the scuffle. Vincent goes after him to save him, and as he runs around, he finds lots of people killing each other in the most brutal ways. When he finally finds his dad, Vincent sees the blank look and gets ready to defend himself, but Jean-Pierre attacks a woman instead and kills her. Sultan appears next to Vincent but he doesn't make a single sound, which makes Vincent realize nobody attacks him anymore. More people fill the area and Vincent pushes them out of the way, but he can't find his dad. Meanwhile Margot has to watch how a person kills another one on the hood of Vincent's car. At that moment she finds the handcuffs key and frees herself to go after Vincent, who refuses to leave without Jean-Pierre. Margot points out they'll get killed if they stay, so they run away from the main road and take a trail through the forest. After a few hours of walking, Vincent's face suddenly goes blank and he attacks Margot. As he chokes her, she struggles against him and manages to cover his eyes, making him stop. Vincent feels terrible and lets Margot blindfold his eyes with a piece of her shirt before they keep going. When they reach town, there are snipers on the roofs who shoot in the air to scare them away. As they run down the road, Margot sees an abandoned car, so she throws out the driver's body and takes the vehicle to drive back to the river. There she removes the blindfold and kisses Vincent before going back to her boat. After thinking about it for a few seconds, Vincent and Sultan join her, and the group sails away together. Margot blindfolds Vincent and handcuffs his hand just in case, but she also hugs him as they promise to start a new life together. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.